Hello booktube, it's Andrea here. How are you? How is your week going? Are you having a lovely reading time? I know I am. We're, wow, almost at Christmas. It's the latter half of December. Christmas is just around the corner. I can't believe that 2016 is nearly over. So I thought I'd come here today and do a December book haul. These are the books I've bought up until this point or been given up until this point. Obviously I will probably be getting a few books for Christmas. I don't know how many or even if I will get any but if I do obviously I'll do a Christmas haul. But so these are the ones I've either bought or been given um, up to this point. So I'm going to start with the ones that were given to me by my friend Sue. She buys books from charity shops, reads them, passes them on to me. I read them and I pass them on to somebody else, so we keep it going. So the first book she gave me is uh, You Are Next by Katya Leaf. So basically this one says, Detective Karen Schaefer was a happily married mother until she got too close to catching a serial killer. The press nicknamed him the Domino Killer because he systematically murders whole families, leaving a trail of bloody dominoes as the only clue to his next victim. Having brutally slain Karen's husband and child, he had left her a chilly message written in her daughter's blood. You are next. And now the Domino Killer has escaped prison and the police believe he's on his way to find her. But Karen is waiting. So I'm looking forward to that one. Sounds really good. So that was the first one she gave me. The second, the next one she gave me was The Cutting Season by Attica Locke. I love the cover on this one. I think it looks quite spooky actually. And this one says, a young woman lies face down in a shallow grave, her throat cut clean. She's found by the cane fields next to Belle V, a historic plantation house in Louisiana. The manager, Karen, I guess Karen, saw some disturbed earth when she inspected the grounds just after dawn. Sent to take a look, the gardener calls to tell her she missed something, a terrible something. Now Karen has police on site and an investigation in progress and a member of staff no one can track down. And she keeps uncovering things she wishes she didn't know. She wishes she didn't know. So living on site with her daughter, she wonders how much danger are they in? So that's another one that looks really good. Um, then the next one is You Belong to Me by Samantha Hayes. Again, this is another creepy cover. Um, you can never escape your past. And it says, fleeing the terrors of her former life, Isabel has left England and is at last beginning to feel safe. Then a letter shatters her world. And she returns home determined not to let fear rule her life anymore. But she's unable to shake off the feeling that someone who knows her better than she knows herself may be following her, watching, waiting, ready to step back into her life and take control all over again. Wow, it's another one that sounds really good. And finally, uh, there's this big paperback, quite a big one actually, it just is not massive actually, and the font's quite good, and it's damaged by Alex Carver. Um, a box of butchered body parts, a hurricane on the horizon and a serial killer on the loose. Special agent Maggie O'Dell thought she'd seen it all in her career. Amidst the killers, psychos and criminals she has hunted, she's delved into the darkest and most shockingly evil recesses of the human mind. But when a cool box filled with individually wrapped body parts washes up on the shore of Florida's Pensacola Beach, even Maggie is appalled. While across the state people brace themselves against a coming storm, Maggie traces the butchered torso back to a man who mysteriously disappeared weeks ago. Now trapped in the eye of an impending monster hurricane, Maggie must track down a determined killer before he strikes again. So that's another one. We love thrillers, we discuss them all the time. We also like biographies, so there we go. So the next, uh, oh I've gone really out of focus there. The next three books are ones I picked up in my local supermarket Tesco on their charity bookshelf. Um, so these ones were 50 pence each. The first one I've got is Nikki French Waiting for Wednesday. This is actually the third one in a serial because the first one is called uh, Blue Monday, then there's Tuesday's Gone, Waiting for Wednesday and Thursday's Children. I don't think you need to read them in order, but I will probably try and pick up the other two before I read this one. Just a chance remark made by a potential client, but a psychotherapist free decline sets off alarm bells. Haunted by their significance, she is driven to find out more, and her search draws her into a dark world of missing young women, inhabited by a predator so careful, so subtle, that the police aren't yet aware of his crimes. With each step, Frida gets closer to a silent killer whose determination to stay hidden is matched only by her desperate need to find him 
and stay alive. So that one looks absolutely fantastic. I love Nikki French. Another author I really like, I picked up 50 for 50p, is Karen Rose. And this one is an absolute monster of a book. It's called Alone in the Dark. And it comes in at 720 pages. Look at it. 720 pages. Anyway, this one says, Former Army Ranger Marcus O'Banion and Homicide Detective Scarlett Bishop have met only briefly, but when he calls asking for Scarlett's help, her response is immediate. Heading to one of Cincinnati's roughest areas, Scarlett finds an injured Marcus alongside the body of a teenage Asian girl. Marcus claims the terrified young woman had been abused by an affluent local family and having reached out for help has been targeted for death. Their investigation soon pulls Scarlett and Marcus into the dangerous world of human trafficking where they realise they must become as ruthless as those they are hunting because if they don't, how many other girls may end up alone in the dark? So, I like, I like these. I like Karen Rose, she's absolutely brilliant. And the last one I picked up for 50p is one for one of my book collections. As you know, I collect books on Marilyn Monroe and on Hollywood, on ancient Egypt. I have photography books and so on. As you all know, I collect books on Jack the Ripper. So I picked this one up for 50 pence and it's Crime Investigator Jack Ripper, Catch Me When You Can. It's, um, there's no author on this, but it's by Igloo Books. I have one of theirs already with the, the palette things. It's up on the shelf. Um, and it just says about case of Jack the Ripper, the unidentified serial killer who plagued the East End of London in the late 19th century, is one of the greatest and most famous unsolved murder mysteries of all time. This comprehensive account documents the key events that took place around the time of the brutal Whitechapel killings, speculates over the identity of Jack and details his unfortunate victims. With authentic photographs and well-researched information, this is the only Ripper book you'll need. It's a little bit thin to be the only Ripper book you need with all the theories that there are. Um, but yes, it, it is absolutely um, lots of information on it, to be honest. Um, there's one of the pictures that's uh, the last victim of the Canonical Five, Mary Jane Kelly's um, room. They, say it's her, they call it an apartment in some ways, it's like it's a room. It's, it's probably not much bigger than the room I'm sitting in right this minute and she lived in it um, because that's that they lived in such squalid. Uh, circumstances and I'm not going to show you any for victims because they can be quite horrible but I'm really hoping that I'll be going to see um, one of the Jack the Ripper experts give a talk about Jack the Ripper soon I'll keep you posted on that I just got to book the tickets and I haven't done it yet because I need to get some money get paid soon so I'll do it then now the next two books were again from my local Tesco supermarket um, they were on their two for seven pound shelf or their 3.85 each or two for seven pound so I picked up one for Christmas Heidi Swain's mince pies and mistletoe at the Christmas market you, know, you can't see that it's a bit that's better it's a lovely lovely Christmas card this is going to be in my Friday reads by the way but I will still do my Friday reads <laughs> Um, so Christmas has arrived in the town of Winbridge and it's promises mince pies mistletoe and a whole lot of seasonal joy what more could you want? Ruby has finished with university and he is heading home for the holidays. She takes on a stall at the local market and sets out about making it the best Christmas market stall ever. There will be bunting and mistletoe and maybe even a bit of mulled wine. But with a new retail purchase open, the market is under threat. So together with all the other stall holders, Ruby devises a plan to make sure the market is the first port of call for everyone's Christmas shopping needs. The only thing standing in her way is her ex, Steve. And it's pretty hard to concentrate when he works on the stall opposite, especially when she realises that her feelings for him are still there. This Christmas, make time for some winter sparkle and see who might be under the mistletoe this year. Now, I don't do a lot of reading romance books, but I do read the odd ones. I do like these ones. Um, some of these ones are quite, really, really quite good, so. Can't go wrong with a bit of easy reading for the over the Christmas. And the next one I bought, um, I've been looking at this one in there for a while, and I just love the title. The cover has got gorgeous red hearts on it, and it's all glossy. And it's How to Find Love in a Bookshop by Veronica Henry. So isn't that gorgeous? The way that, that the little hearts on it. Yeah, 
and on the side on the spine it's such a lovely little thing and it says everyone has a story but will they get the happy ending they deserve Amelia has just returned from her to return to her idyllic Cots Cotswold hometown to rescue the family business Nightingale Books is a dream come true for book lovers but the best stories aren't just within the pages of the books she sells Amelia's customers have their own tales to tell there's the lady of the manor who is hiding a secret close to her heart the single dad looking for books to share with his son but who isn't quite what he seems and the desperately shy chef chef trying to find chef <laughs> chef trying to find the courage to talk to her crush and as for Amelia's story can she keep the promise she made to her father and save Nightingale books so it's set in a bookshop it's gonna be good right I'm gonna enjoy it anyway so those were the the two, the two uh, on the three for seven pound shelf I then picked up one that's done the rounds of booktube a lot this year and last year and that's the girls by Emma Klein I picked this one up because it was uh, five pounds for the hardback um, basically every now and again when they're trying to get rid of some of their stocks I assume they put a try me for a fiver on it they did it with Ruth Ware's the um, the woman in Cavern 10, however, luckily I picked that up for 50p on their charity shelf. So I did pick up that. I'm not going to read the blurb because you all know what that's about. In fact, you'll know what all the last three are about. So I'm just going to quickly show you them. And the next one is another one that's related to Jack the Ripper. And that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. Now, fic Ripper fiction can be hit or miss, but this one sounds really good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm thinking I'm going to read this for a holiday booktubeathon, and um, because it can be my one that I've become really into. You know, it, it says uh, the thing was a, a genre that you've become really interested in, or something you've become really interested in last year. I've really started collecting Ripper books this year more so than any other year, so I, I might read it for that one. And the last book is The Chemist by Stephanie Mayer. I'm going to be honest, I've never read Twilight. I have no intentions of ever reading Twilight. I did see the first film, but I have never, never uh, read the books. I mean, I suppose if somebody just dropped them on my doorstep, I might read them, but I've got so much else that I want to read anyway. So yes, I do like the cover of this. It's quite a chunker. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's how many pages is this? This is like 500 pages. 518 pages long but because you know I, I mean I'm, I'm willing to give it a try it sounds really good again I picked this up I thought I'm gonna have it I need a book I mean it's like some people when they get stressed they smoke or they drink I eat chocolate and read books and buy books so I have had some other books but they are Marilyn rated ones and I will be doing a Marilyn book haul uh, shortly but, so I'm going to keep those separately so I've got around 10 and then I'll just haul them so you may see them in wrap ups but so those are the books I've bought so far in December um obviously with Christmas I'm hoping to get more because <laughs> you know I, I've got like over 130 physical books to read on my TBR and like 600 odd on my Kindle it doesn't matter bring them on the more the merrier I'd say <laughs> I think I've got a problem a very serious problem a book problem Nah. Now bring it on. So I, I don't. Hopefully, I'm going to try and cut down my book spending in uh, 2017, at least the beginning, so I can get rid of some of the TBR. I do know what I'm planning to buy um, next. Actually, there's lots I want to buy. I was saying I'm going to calm down and stop buying it. It's not going to happen, is it? No. I'm still going to be buying lots of books, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough from me. Um, so yeah, if you've read any of these, um, let me know in your comments. I know a lot of people have read Jack, Stalking Jack the Ripper, The Girls and The Chemist, but if you've read any others, let me know down in the comments. We can have a discussion about it. Tell me what you think I should read first. I mean, obviously, um, I'm planning on Stalking Jack the Ripper for a holiday booktubeathon, and obviously the Christmas one is going to be for Christmas. I've got a few others I'm going to put in that Friday reads. Um, well, on Friday, really so that's it for me like I said leave me a comment don't forget to to share this give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and of course subscribe because you know why not <laughs> I'll be back soon with some more bookish nonsense and um, I hope you're having a lovely lovely December I hope you're getting lots of reading done and I will see you soon bye bye now